Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. Tensira. Melting the Eternal Frost by Jack D.A. Web Chapter 23 Playtime's Over. Rimuru's Pav it's good that those two finally managed to reconcile. I couldn't exactly hear what they were saying, and I didn't want to pry, but things were looking up from the way everything looked. However, that's not my main issue. Those two still want to fight, aren't they satisfied yet? I'm not sure how much longer this barrier can hold. Every time a stray attack hits the barrier, I deplete more energy to compensate for the damage. Yo, Veldora, how are you holding up? Less than ha 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 ha. I'm doing all right. Rimuru, greater than. Good for you. I can't exactly say the same myself. I'm using up a shit ton of magicules at an alarming rate. Currently, you have depleted less than 5% of your total magicule supply. Oi, Seal, did you just casually reveal yourself to Veldora? Less than ha ha ha. I was already aware of CL's existence ever since your demon lord evolution, greater than. R really? Less than UMU. It was a very surprising revelation. Never before had I encountered a skill with an ego, greater than. I see. And I assume you're alright with him knowing about you, Seal? Yes, Rimuru Sama. Besides, even if Veldora was unaware of my existence before, his assimilation with you transferred his soul into yours, where I reside. It would have been nearly impossible to keep myself hidden. I suppose that makes sense if you put it that way. Less than but still, I was surprised. When I got transferred into your soul, Seal, who I knew back then as your skill, Raphael, seemed incredibly different. Eventually, I figured out that you managed to separate the ego from the skill by granting it a name, a feat I never thought possible. Greater than. Fufufu. I commend you for figuring that one out on your own, Veldora. Emhem. Never would have expected it myself. Less than ku ha 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 ha. A simple task for someone such as me, the mighty storm dragon. It was made especially easy thanks to my ultimate skill, Faust. Anyway, that aside, what the hell should I do about those two battle maniacs? Less than let them fight. Greater than ha? Huh? Have you gone insane? Less than they're still holding back, Rimuru. The barrier will be fine, greater than. Idiot. That's not the point. Rimuru Sama, I suggest that you intervene in their battle when your magicule supply has depleted by more than 10%. See, Seal? Isn't that dangerous? With 10% fewer magicules, I'll be no match for them. Fufufu. Rest assured, Rimuru Sama, with the assimilation still active, you'll be more than powerful enough to stop them. It also helps that they're both holding back significantly. That doesn't instill much confidence, but I'll take what I can get. Additionally, intervening in their fight would be the perfect excuse to use a new ability we'd like you to test out. Wait, what do you mean by, we, less than oh, so you want to give that a go, seal, greater than. The hell? What are you talking about? Veldora and I have devised a combat mechanism that you can only utilize when, true dragon release. Has Veldora assimilated with you? Combat mechanism? So while I was busy maintaining and strengthening the barrier, these two were fiddling around with abilities. Sigh. I expected this behavior from Seal, but to think that Veldora would take part. What role did he even play in creating this combat mechanism? Think of Milam and Velzard's current transformations. Those two gained new forms through the use of something known as battle mode. It is an ability that transforms the user's body into one that is best suited for combat. Several factors are taken into consideration when the ideal form is created such as the user's physical attributes, magical attributes, and spiritual attributes, just to name a few. Oh, so what you're saying is that I now have a combat form like Milam and Velzard? Precisely. Cool, as expected of you, Seal. But where does Veldora come into play? Less than Kuhahaha. How could you forget that at this moment, the majority of your magical attributes are from me? Greater than. That's right. A lot of my magicules right now come from Veldora. Even if he is currently assimilated with me, most of the energy I'm using is ultimately his at the end of the day. Still, that doesn't explain why Seal said, We. Less than thanks to that fact, I can influence certain aspects of the form. Seal and I created the most optimized form for you to use. 
it'll come in handy for stopping my sister and niece, greater ban. It took some time to create the most optimal combat form, after all, you have a lot of abilities at your disposal, and your attributes have been significantly amped thanks to Veldora. But we managed to come up with a transformation that best suits you, Rimuru Sama. You too have my most sincere gratitude, I don't know how far I would have come if it weren't for both of you helping me along the way. No problem, Rimuru Sama. Less than don't mention it, sworn brother, greater than. Would you like to activate battle mode? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't just reveal a powerful trump card like that in public. Foo, foo, foo. That is not a problem, Rimuru Sama. With a bit of illusion magic and thought manipulation, for good measure, none will learn of this new ability. A all right then. I trust you. Less than ku ha 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 ha. Yes. Witness our masterpiece, Rimuru, greater than. Activating, battle mode, storm. After Seal uttered those words, I felt an immediate change within myself. I stood up from my seat and waited patiently as my transformation took place. Judging from its pace, it's nowhere near as quick as Milam or Belzard's transformation. I presume this is due to it being my first time. My whole body began glowing, and then it started morphing into the ideal shape. The process was weird. For one, my point of view slightly shifted as I grew taller. I felt lighter and more agile. The weirdest part was that the guests around me didn't mind what was happening to me. So this is the work of CL's illusion magic. Realizing that my transformation was nearing completion, I flew up into the air and hovered above some spectators to give myself more space. The view of the arena from here was unmatched. I continued watching the skirmish between Milam and Velzard, patiently waiting for my temporary evolution to finish. Some moments later, my transformation was finally complete. I activated universal perception to view myself from a different perspective. For a moment, I became speechless as I gazed upon myself. There I saw my new form. It was truly beautiful. Seal and Veldora did an astounding job with it. Several changes in my new appearance were noteworthy. The most noticeable change is that I now had large dragon wings similar in color to Veldora's. Lightning bolts were marked on the sides of my eyes, and they glowed a bright yellow. My physique was now a bit bulkier, but the overall appearance was still quite lean. Blonde streaks also covered my normally platinum blue hair. I assumed this was Veldora's design choice. As for the clothes I was wearing, it was no joke. For starters, everything, and I mean every piece of clothing or armor on me was god grade. I donned a white and blue cloak, replacing my usual demon lord jacket. Armor made of efficiently condensed magicules protected my forearms. It sort of reminds me of Wonder Woman's bracelets, only mine covered the entire forearm. Now I really feel like a true dragon, ha ha ha. This is great. Is this how Milam and Velzard feel when they go into battle mode? Now I understand why they're so livid right now. This feels amazing. Plus, going into your combat form has so many pros and no cons that I can think of. The efficiency improvement of this battle form is incredible. I could probably cast an incredibly powerful spell or use an absurd skill and barely drain my magicules. With this, I can maintain the barrier for much longer before I have to step in myself. I'm confident that with this new form, I can compete with the likes of Guy, Milam, or Velzard. Putting that thought aside, I continued watching the battle. It was intense. Sparks of light clashed inside the barrier, explosions, and shockwaves shook the battlefield, and a flurry of attacks ravaged the space inside. The two of them were moving so fast that it was still hard for me to track their movements even with my newfound powers. Looking around at the spectators, they were all captivated by the fight. Unlike the previous matches, there were no loud cheers or roars from the audience. Instead, they watched in pure awe as they witnessed a clash on a scale rarely ever witnessed by most people. But suddenly, Milam and Velzard stopped moving. They then faced each other while hovering high above the ground, effectively having a stare down in the sky. What the hell? Is their battle finally over? Are they finally satisfied? But I couldn't have been more wrong. In the next moment, both of them began charging up an attack of some kind. Oi, what the fuck? That looks powerful. Detecting extreme surges of magicules, I can see that. Drago Nova, Milam yelled out, sending a powerful burst of energy forth at her opponent. Frost break, Belzard retaliated, releasing her own attack against Milam's. Two bright beams were sent forth and met in the middle, lighting up the arena. 
I was expecting a beam clash to occur, but my expectations were subverted. Milam's attack was composed of stardust, an incredibly destructive particle. Yet, somehow, Belzard managed to nearly cancel most of its energy with her attack. How? The beam released by Belzard made use of negative energy. By using negative energy, the highly destructive energy of Milam's attack was cancelled out. So it's like positive plus negative then, doing that would cancel both out. However, Milam's attack contained so much energy that Belzard couldn't fully nullify it. Still, that is very impressive. I wonder if I could counteract, Drago Nova. There are several ways to counteract, Drago Nova, now that it has been analyzed. The first method would be to consume it directly with Azathoth, although it may prove difficult to consume all of it. Another way is to nullify it with turn null. However, it's a dangerous option since the destructive energy of, imaginary collapse, can harm you. Star ash could be used, but I wouldn't recommend it. The most optimal method would be utilizing, white ice magic, and generating negative energy to properly dampen stardust's power. Just like what Velzard did, huh? Good to know, thanks, seal. I will do further analysis on stardust once the fight is over. There may be better ways to deal with it. Imhum. I expect great things from you, partner. The residual energy bounced off the contact point and collided with the barrier. Despite being enhanced, the leftover attack was powerful enough to leave small cracks. I repaired the barrier as soon as it got damaged, further depleting my magicules. Noticing that it had gone down by 10%, I finally decided to take action. Stealing my resolve, I quickly warped inside the barrier right in between the two combatants just as they were about to clash. My arms extended sideways to catch their fists. I immediately felt a surge of energy course through my body as a result of catching the blows. Luckily, the kinetic energy was dissipated into Azathoth, leaving me with no permanent damage. I think your fight has gone on long enough, I stated firmly, surprising both Milam and Velzard. Our Rimuru, Milam stuttered, surprised by my intervention. She quickly backed away, appearing ever shocked. Our Rimu Kun, what's with the new look? Velzard asked, surprised. HMPH, you two aren't the only ones with battle forms. I replied smugly. They both widened their eyes in amazement. So this is your battle form. Rimuru? Milam asked excitedly while flying around me, examining my new appearance. Fufufu, it looks like you fused with Veldora, but the form looks amazing. Velzard complimented genuinely. Well, I did have to assimilate his energy with me so that I could contain this damn battle. I said bluntly while giving Milam a side eye. She awkwardly whistled away, pretending not to notice my words. Sigh, you two are a handful. I remarked tiredly, causing Velzard to giggle. Next time, let's fight, Rimuru, Milam demanded excitedly. Hard pass. I denied it immediately. Why? It's such a waste not to use your battle form, and one that's extremely powerful too, Milam cried out. My battle form is for emergency cases only, besides, I can't use it without Veldora. I explained, causing Milam to sigh in disappointment with a pout. I've also devised a battle mode that doesn't require the assimilation with Veldora. Huh? You can't just casually drop a bombshell like that, oh well. Thank you, seal. Fufufu. No problem, Rimuru-sama. I guess I can use a battle form without Veldora. However, I'm not telling Milam that. I'm sure she'll hound me for a fight every waking moment if she found out. Despite my current strength, I don't see myself beating the likes of Milam, Guy, or Velzard, not without, true dragon release, or, imaginary collapse. Now that the fighting has stopped, I returned to my normal form. Milam and Velzard did the same. I then dispelled the barrier, which made me regain most of the magicules I expended while maintaining it. I then released Veldora back into the physical plane, meaning my EP had gone down back to 25,700,000. How sad. Welp, it was fun while it lasted. Kuahahaha. How did it feel wielding the power of a true dragon, Rimuru? Veldora asked excitedly. Milam and Velzard looked eager to hear my response. If the circumstances were better, I said and paused to look at the two fighters with a deadpanned face. They both proceeded to look away sheepishly. It would have been a lot better. Regardless, that was amazing. I almost got drunk on power. Thanks for your help today, Veldora. I expressed my gratitude sincerely. UMU. 
If you ever need to wield my power any time, let me know. Beldora affirmed happily and I nodded with a smile. This makes me wonder. Could you do the same with me, Rimukun? Belzard asked curiously, causing Milam and Veldora to perk up. Definitely, but I'll explain it more at another time, I told her. Fufufu, looking forward to it, Belzard replied. Third person Pav as the Milam, Rimuru, and Belzard bantered in the sky, the audience was left in utter shock from what they'd witnessed. For one, they were able to see a battle between the gods take place, a rare opportunity few even get. But most shocking of all was the fact that they witnessed Rimuru take a head on attack from both Milam and Velzard to stop them. Seal used illusion magic on everyone who wasn't an executive of Rimuru. From the audience's perspective, they saw that the fight concluded in a draw, and Rimuru stepped in to declare it over. They also couldn't see the new battle form, leaving everyone none the wiser. Loud applause and cheers rang out in the Colosseum, but the executives were more shocked than anything. Excluding Diablo and Zijin, Rimuru's executives were all left in astonishment after seeing their master undergo some type of new transformation and quickly halting Milam and Velzard's attacks. While they knew he was powerful, this even went beyond their expectations, if not only by a little, but their surprise swiftly turned into amazement and pride. Another point they took note of is that Rimuru's aura felt like it was mixed in with Veldora's aura, and Veldora himself was nowhere to be found during the whole battle. While they didn't understand exactly what happened, they speculated that Rimuru and Veldora fused in some way. It's an absurd thought that would normally be dismissed, but their master was the very definition of absurd. That their individuals in the air landed on the ground and then Rimuru walked over to the podium. He declared the grand tournament of battle, as well as the entire founding festival a resounding success. The Colosseum erupted into the loudest applause of the day, and out of courtesy, Rimuru, along with Milam and Velzard, took a grand bow on stage. Nighttime had befallen the city, and so Rimuru and Velzard met up with the guests for one last dinner. This would mark the conclusion of the founding festival. After which, the guests will return to their homelands. Rimuru's paw of everything has gone smoothly so far. Thank Veldanaba. Excluding some obstacles concerning a few, EHEM, battle maniacs, the event was amazing. There was also the issue of Shimo being placed too high in the dungeon, but I consider that a minor problem. It can easily be resolved by simply moving her position. Anywho, we were now seated at the grand dining hall, having one last dinner before the guests departed the next day. Belzard had returned to her maid form. Hee hee hee. It looks like she intends to uphold her end of the bet. Thankfully, the guests didn't question anything regarding her anymore. Oh yeah. I also told those who weren't under the illusion magic to keep what truly happened a secret from everyone else. My Veldora battle form should be a trump card that must be kept hidden from everyone outside of Tempest, ally or not. Speaking of battle form, I did briefly allude to the fact that I could assimilate Veldora and Velzard simultaneously. I wonder if the form would look different. The new battle form would indeed take on a new appearance if Velzard were assimilated along with Veldora. Makes sense. By the way, you mentioned Velzard gaining an ultimate skill during her battle earlier, do you know what it is? The ultimate skill is, Lord of Envy, Leviathan. A member of the Deadly Sins series just like Beelzebub. Its main attributes are analysis and empowering the user through their desires. I see. So it's like a mix of Raphael and some other skill. Exactly. Hmm. She's quite kitted out now, even more than she already was. True dragons are basically ultimate skills themselves, so the fact that she now possesses two makes her more powerful. I'm not sure why but I have a feeling that Gabriel and Leviathan make an incredibly deadly pair. It's as if those two skills were made to be used in tandem with one another. Back to the complete assimilation. It would take a serious emergency for me to even consider doing it. If I used, true dragon release, on both Veldora and Velzard, my existence value would skyrocket up to 194,700,000, making it almost halfway to qualifying for the Abaddon class. On top of that, a new, battle mode, would be created for me. This makes complete assimilation a truly final resort, although, I'm sure Velzard would be eager to try assimilating loan with me. And to be completely honest, I'd also like to see it. Battle mode, white ice, will for sure be a menace, both in power and appearance. Seal and Velzard would definitely make a terrifying duo, so I'd be interested in seeing the form they'd conjure up. However, 
Belzard assimilating with me means that she'll become aware of Ciel's existence. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Heck, I don't even know if Seal is ready to reveal herself to another individual. Ever since the days of, Great Sage, she's wanted to keep an extremely low profile, even from my closest subordinates. But Belzard is a rare case wherein Seal, or at the time, Raphael, allowed herself to be known to someone. So perhaps. Rimuru Sama, I suggest using, True Dragon Release, White Ice, at a later date. Ehhh, I thought you'd be against it. Fufufu. Not at all. I'd like to experiment with a new battle form for you using Velzard's attributes this time. I see. How opportunistic, ha ha ha. I bet you'll also do further analysis on her new skill or something ridiculous like that. Not exactly the skill, but something. Else. W what? There's something I'd like to confirm about Leviathan, and assimilating Velzard is the best way to do it. A all right then. I trust your judgment, third person Pav. Everyone continued eating their meal while discussing the battles that took place. Masayuki was being hailed as a supreme hero, much to Rimuru and Velzard's amusement. The dungeon was also brought up again. The guests sang their praises about the complex mechanisms behind it and the ingenuity of the whole project. However, the main highlight of the night was the clash between Milam and Velzard. They expressed pure awe while discussing what they witnessed. This made Milam look smug the entire time they were talking feeling as if the guests were praising her power and might, which they were doing to an extent. Belzard sat elegantly, paying little mind to the discussion at hand. About half an hour later, the dinner had concluded. Rimuru went up to each group of guests and exchanged some words with them. A few of the guests decided to stay over for the night before heading back, while some decided to teleport home instead. Once Rimuru made his final remarks, the guests left for the night, satisfied with their experience in Tempest. Normally, this would be the time when Rimuru and Velzard headed home, however, they had different matters to tend to. The two of them went to the capital and entered the meeting hall, awaiting the other executives. Rimuru called a brief meeting despite the late hour, which meant little since most monsters didn't require sleep. A few minutes later, everyone arrived. Rimuru's pav I decided to call for a meeting once the guests left for the night. I felt a bit bad considering how busy everyone had been from the founding festival and the fact that it was late at night, but I wanted to discuss matters regarding the expedition to Gistav, Clayman's former territory, as well as the Western Council. It's about time I dealt with these concerns. There's good reason to suspect that the expedition is a trap for me devised by Yuki. The expedition will be a good way to lure him out in the open and expose his true nature. Despite the risks involved, I'm fairly confident that he won't be able to cause me much harm, after all, he's weak. As for the Western Council, I've decided to give a shot at joining them. Being part of the Council would prove beneficial for my goal of coexistence, but I don't necessarily need to. If they ever start making ridiculous demands, I'll back off and find another way. However, if I am to join the Council, then I'd need to have a powerful and intelligent ambassador to represent Tempest in the Council. I recall Velzard suggesting the white primordial Blanc to fill the position of Tempest representative, but I've yet to ask Diablo for further details regarding her. With this meeting, I can finally discuss with him the idea of having another primordial under my service. After composing myself on my seat, I looked around at my executives before beginning the meeting. Thank you all for showing up to this late and sudden meeting, I said firmly and everyone nodded. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate everyone for contributing to the resounding success of the founding festival. I announced proudly and they started applauding. Once they calmed down, I proceeded. Now then. The first matter to be discussed is the upcoming expedition to Gistav. I have a good reason to suspect that it's a trap meant for me. Yuki is quite a suspicious individual, after all. I explained briefly and everyone nodded. Will you call off the expedition, Rimuru Sama? Shuna asked, concerned. Not at all. In fact, I'd like to use the expedition as an opportunity to lure him out into the open. I speculate that he'll have forces ready to overwhelm me when the perfect time comes, so I've come up with a plan, I said. Is it to fight fire with fire? Benamaru asked with a slight grin and I nodded with a smirk to confirm. Exactly. Yuki likely plans to go to Gistav via carriage, but I intend to arrive using a different method. Belzard, and I will head there first and she'll conceal her presence as soon as we arrive. Sheehan and Sue will accompany Yuki and his group on the carriage to keep an eye on them, 
I elaborated. Understood. Rimuru sama. Sue affirmed firmly. You can count on me, Rimuru sama. Shian exclaimed proudly. Fufufu, so I'll be a hidden force of sorts. I'm excited. Belzard said with a devious grin on her face. Imhem. While I'm confident that Yuki can't do anything to me, it's better to be safe. Who knows what monstrosities lie waiting in Jistav? If things get messy, then I'll transport some of our troops to the expedition site. Benamaru, I'd like you to have some military personnel on standby. I requested and Benamaru nodded. Now for my next concern. It's about the Western Council, I said. What of it? Kaijin asked curiously. I intend to try joining it, as doing so would be beneficial for my goal of achieving coexistence with humanity. I explained, causing some of my executives to widen their eyes in surprise. I fear that they still resent us monsters, even if Luminous San has changed the doctrine. It'll take a long time for humans to adjust to such a drastic change. Shuna remarked dejectedly. It's worth giving a shot since it's the best way. But joining would mean I'd require an ambassador to represent Tempest in the council. They'd have to be quite powerful while also being capable of handling matters diplomatically. I explained. Sheehan immediately perked up after hearing that. Then I shall be Tempest's ambassador, Rimuru Sama. Sheehan declared boldly, and the other executives shuddered with fear and concern. Absolutely not. I quickly shut her down. BB, but Rimuru Sama, aren't I strong enough? she asked in despair. That's not the problem, it's that you can't handle things in a diplomatic matter at all. I shot back loudly, causing her to fall to the ground in defeat. Kufufu. If the first secretary isn't up for it, then it's up to me, Rimuru Sama. Diablo chimed in smugly and Sheehan looked at him in annoyance. Sigh, these two and their stupid rivalry. I'm afraid that's out of the question, Diablo. While you are my strongest subordinate and also capable of dealing with political matters, your plate is already full enough. I'd hate to add such a grueling task to your list. I said earnestly. Diablo remained firm, however. That is not a problem, Rimuru Sama, he insisted. It's better if you focus on your assigned tasks. Rather, I have something else to ask you, Diablo, I said. What is it? he asked. There is someone in mind that I'd like to give this task to. However, they aren't a part of Tempest. Not yet. I said ambiguously, causing my subordinates to grow curious and a bit surprised. But Rimuru Sama, being a Tempest representative in the Western Council is a major role, wouldn't it be better to assign that role to someone in our ranks? Shuna suggested with a hint of concern. Ideally so. However, everyone already has their respective roles, so I believe it's best to look elsewhere. Besides, this person was suggested by Velzard, and I'd like to ask Diablo here for more information regarding them. I explained and they nodded. However, Diablo's eyes widened for a moment. I turned to face the slightly surprised demon before asking him. Diablo, tell me what you know about the white primordial, blonde.